Hello and welcome to the PASCOM phone system video tutorial series. Uh, the topic of today is very end user focused and we're going to have a look at a, the PASCOM desktop clients and introduce everything from A to Z, uh, go through everything through from uh, top to bottom, left to right and uh, let you know what's going on. So um, first things first, Matthias, what do we need to know about our desktop clients? We start with the login. It's a good place. Maybe your administrator tell, uh, told you how you should log in and everything, but mm -hmm. maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> um, then we show you again. Okay, fair enough. So we start at the beginning. Yes, at the very beginning, the, log on, uh, the login screen. So you started our application. Uh, what you need is username, password, and which server you want to connect to. The server you want to connect to is Passcom Cloud per default. Maybe you have an on-site server, then this is another one, which is... Uh, hopefully. Could be an IP yeah. address, could be a domain main. Whatever. Yeah, exactly. Here is the only thing which is, uh, which you have to know. It's not enough to have your username, but you have also to have at your company. Because in Passcom Cloud, we're hosting many, many uh, companies and each company has its own name or instance. Yeah. So you have to say my name at my the, company in is, the most this, cases. Basically, this is how we identify uh, which users connect with which phone system in our cloud. Yes, yeah. so this is really what you have to know what somebody had yeah. told you uh, and which you have to enter here. And one of the things that we found is it's what most end users overlook. Yes. Yeah. So what's next with the client? That was the most complicated part, I think. Ah, fair Lo enough. Logging on. Yeah, okay, good. All right, so what we see here is the desktop client. This is the uh, Mac version, yeah. Yes. Uh, we have it for Windows and Linux. And what should we be aware of here? So what, what, what you have to know is that it has different sizes and that it's optimized for okay. different scenarios. So this is maximum. In the max size, you have the roster list here or the, the contact list with all your contacts out of your company. You have a dynamic field. Here is the search per default. Uh, you can access the release notes, help give us some feedback. So mm -hmm. please give us feedback if yep. you'd like to. Yep. Uh, and here is the soft phone or the hard phone remote controller. It's okay. the same. Right. Okay. okay. So that's it. And you can change the size. Uh, if you get smaller, you have only two left and here only one, which is also the same like the mobile view. If you don't want to do this slowly, you can jump around with uh, shortcuts and just make the application bigger or smaller. Okay, good. So now we've got the sort of the basic uh, layout of the client. What's the next thing that we need to consider? Uh, when we first open it, obviously there's a lot of information. Now we know where everything is, but let's have a look at, for example, the uh, contact list. What can we do there? Yes, you have to understand a few bits and pieces there mm -hmm. to make the ideal uh, communication for you. Um, you have to know that we have some, some dates and, and what they mean and what you can do and what you can show other people okay. and mm -hmm. um, how this all works. Okay, so let's have a look at that. It's relatively easy. So this is your own status. Um, you can see, obviously, you're sitting on your computer. So here is the green icon, which means you're on the computer. Here, your colleague Veronica is on the mobile currently. So this little icon shows you all the time where is somebody Sitting. Working, sitting. What, what device they're using. What the device they're using, mm -hmm. yes. So this has nothing to do with if she wants to be disturbed or not. Mm -hmm. It just indicates for you which device she uses. And mm -hmm. you can make some conclusions out of that. You, okay. you, you could say, okay, she is on the mobile and it's not so important and I don't disturb you on the mobile. Yeah. If okay. she's back to work, then I see, ah, she's on the computer now and now I can... So it's, it's sort of a, a machine state. A machine state, Yeah, yes. okay, good. And then there is the next state which I can set as user because only because of the fact that I'm on the machine, it does not mean that everybody should call me now. Maybe yeah. I'm working on a presentation, mm -hmm. I do some complicated work where I have to concentrate or whatever. Yeah. This mm -hmm. is my state, what I want to set. This is the, the agent state. Yes. Yeah. So it's easy. I can just drop down here and say, do not disturb. If this is not the text I want, I can say meeting like this. Veronica did the same and I can see, yes, she's available now. So she changed um, the state now. Now the state is in another color. Maybe she has another text here. So you can communicate with the other users mm -hmm. and tell them 
what is in your opinion, your current state. Yeah, and actually using present, this is called presence information, using this is a very good productivity enhancer because it lets people know what you're currently doing in terms of mm -hmm. your availability and it lets them know how to contact you. So you can avoid unnecessary calls or unwanted calls yes. and this, that and the other and actually get your projects done. Yes. Um, we've got a good blog, blog article about it, so have a read, yeah. Um, okay, now the next thing that we could do with the contact list, obviously we've got our states. Um, what about, that's on the left hand side, what about on the right hand side? On the right hand side, there is uh, a phone icon mm -hmm. and you can see it has a different color here and it indicates is this uh, contact reachable by phone or not. Mm -hmm. Now you could argue when could this happen that somebody is not reachable by phone. Um, that's easy because maybe he just started his um, uh, desktop application and is online mm -hmm. but he has not a single phone because he disabled his follow me system. Watch another yep. tutorial about follow me system. Exactly, yep. He disabled all his phones because he don't want calls now. Mm -hmm. Or it could be that you're working with, for example, uh, locations, hot desking. Yes. And the previous day you were in home office. Yeah. Um, so you log on and you have to change your location before you take the next device on, for example. Maybe. So yeah. there, there are situations where you don't have a phone yeah. and or where you disable your phones. Exactly. Yeah. And then it's great. So I can chat with you mm -hmm. because uh, I see you're online and for sure the message is also pushed if you're offline. But you disabled every every possibility to make yeah. a phone call to And then of course there's the other scenario where there's the actual telephony side of things. Yes. If the phone is ringing, it will be then displayed as yellow. If they're currently on the phone, yes. active in a call, it's displayed as red. Yes. Um, and this is all useful yeah. information. And because we want to bring both worlds together, mm -hmm. the new fancy stuff yep. on the PC and mobiles and plus people who just want to use a hardware phone, yep. maybe uh, they're working in, 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 in the stock or I, I don't know. Whatever, yeah. Whatever. Mm -hmm. um, they never use the client. Yeah. That's sad, but mm -hmm. they, they never yeah. use it. And then they have only the phone state. So you see them in mm -hmm. the system, yep. but they are never online, but you can call them. You can never chat with them. Yes. Sad. Yeah, that's sad, but... You, you can call them. You can call them. Yeah. Okay, so good. that's <laughs> why we have those two different layers. And that's other than other software, mm -hmm. which says if you're online, then you're online, and I can do everything with you. Um, and we also care for the offline people. Yeah, so and a classic example could states. be the, the older generation who like this or a stockroom worker, as you said, um, they mm -hmm. just have a hardware phone and that's it. Right, now with the desktop client, we can obviously do much more than just seeing presence information. Uh, the next thing we can do on uh, in the uh, contact list is chat. Yes. How do we do that? That's easy. You just click here and you can chat. Whatever, mm -hmm. I can see also the ticks if uh, somebody answered the message. Mm -hmm. Now I get the message back. I can see that this one wanted to, uh, to communicate with me with the chat message. I can close everything. Here is a little hint, which is a very good trick. If you have a long list, then maybe this one wanted to chat with me and I don't see him in the list. I mm -hmm. just see this indicator. I can click on this indicator and then it filters for all un unread messages. That's very cool. And while we're on the topic uh, of the filter for unread messages, um, and you mentioned it here, if you've got a long list, how do we all make that list so it's understandable for us as a user? Yes. So the first thing you can do is you can just mark your favorites. I can say this is a favorite, this is a favorite, this is a favorite project, uh, whatever. And then I get all my favorites. That's one thing how you can collect them. Mm -hmm. The next thing you can do is change the ordering. Per default, the ordering is last recent. So if I get a chat message from you, you are at the top of yeah. the list. Okay, as if, you'd expect from yes. a, a communications application. Yes, mm -hmm. but there are many people that say, I just want the alphabetic order mm -hmm. or I want ordered by extension yeah. also. This can also be done. Okay. You can just go there and say sorted by recent extension name. So I go for name. And now you see this is ordered by name okay. and this is also ordered by name. Um, that's that's how, how, it, how it works. And in addition, you can now apply filters. Okay. So I, I can open it. I can say, I want only see users. Then I see my favorites and all others filtered. I want only see groups. I want only see online. 
I want only see 100 favorites, whatever. So I can do all of that. And in addition, there are these. This is done by your administrator. These are groups or roles on the mm -hmm. server. Yep. So you could ask your admin for, I want a group of people which I am working very often. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you could use the favorites for sure. But if you have multiple groups, you could say for every section in my company, or we have different sites yeah, or whatever. It could be site A or team yes. sales, whatever it may the be. The administrator can organize such a group yep. for you. And then you can choose out of them and then filter again. So you should also be able to handle a long contact list because actually there is everybody in the contact list which works for your company. Yeah. And using the relevant filters, using the relevant uh, listing op uh, options, you can find the best uh, setup for yourself. Good. Now that's a lot of information on the uh, contact list side. The next thing is the middle area, the dynamic search or the dynamic, well, the search and dynamic uh, mm -hmm. content area. Matthias, what does that do and how does it look like? Yeah. Uh, here's the search, it's very prominent because it's very powerful. So you could search for like this and then you get your contact list entry, your phone book entry, you would get all your chats or call histories when you called her or and so on and so forth. So you get really a lot of information about this um, contact yep. and that's very useful. Here is also the, the phone book result which, could, uh, which, which you could receive. And here, one click, you can just dial all the numbers which are uh, on contact level, like office, like home, like mobile, like fax, even faxing out of the client directly is possible, yep. emailing, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. You can go into details here, you can go back, whatever. Okay. Um, so use the search massively mm -hmm. for our phone books and all the journals and, and whatever. And there is a little trick um, which you can do. I love this intelligent search. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cool. And many people do not know it, but it's possible to uh, search for substrings. That sounds horrible, but it's even easy. You say Chu and Li, because this is Julia Liebel, and you just search for the substrings and you will find her. So why is this important? Maybe you have 10,000 entries in your phone book. This is very common. Yeah, this is and the, so you could the have average. a lot of Julia's. That's, uh, that's the mm -hmm. average, even more, 100, we test with uh, 100,000 and more. Yeah. And then you search for, for Julia, and ha you, have fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you could have lots. Yes. Yeah. And then you have to remember the exact company where she's working for and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. And so you can just say Julia and the begin of the company. And then okay. you will match find it. Okay. So you don't have to remember the whole name, the whole word. You can just search for parts if you don't remember it or it's just faster. Yeah. to search like this. Yeah. And particularly, I assume I mean, that would also work on the mobile view a little bit as well. Yes. So it's much quicker just with the one thumb um, yes. to be able to do it. Um, so that's really cool. Good. Now, what's the next aspect of the client that we need to consider? The next is the phone book itself. So there is a phone book. There is a company phone book. You can also have your private phone book. In the company phone book, it depends on the access rights you have. Mm -hmm. You could edit it. You can add new entries, or it could be synchronized from another system. Mm -hmm. And the administrator says, because it's synchronized from another system, you're not allowed to touch it. Okay. But you can search it, you can use it, you can dial out of it, you can create new entries. And for sure, you can create private entries for everything you okay. like. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why we also have the private phone book. So that, mm -hmm. for example, a specific number to me as an employee, mm -hmm. I can save in my private, and I don't have to then uh, always go to the admin if I don't have rights to add uh, information to the central phone book. I yes. can store it locally on my account. So no yes. matter where I log in, I have access to it. There are a lot of details mm -hmm. which we will not cover. No. But the last thing we want to, to check or in functionality is the call history. Here you have the call history. You talk to what not people and you can filter it for sure. You can have here missed calls, answered elsewhere from a colleague, whatever, attached with voicemails and so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, but what you should know is you can click on them and you get a lot of detail. You can add them to your phone book. You see the call flow through the system and when you previously called that guy. And for how long? For yeah. how long? And if recordings are there, that's another topic uh, tutorial. They will be listed there and so on. Recordings, and so on. Yeah. voicemails, whatever will be tied to the okay. call history. Now, there is a lot to go through with the client. So we're going to 
not end it right now. We're going to go straight into the settings yes. because that's important. Yes. And then, um, you know, we'll go into other uh, tutorials with telephony and collaboration and so on later on. Yes. So the settings, what do we need to know? I think there is only a few things which you have to know. Okay. The first one is, yeah, here you can do call forwarding. You can say, yeah, I call uh, forward something, what not to this destination. Yeah. You can do your headset settings. I think this is self-explaining. You can choose a webcam for all the collaboration stuff. My devices. This is has a lot of features, mm -hmm. which we cover in another tutorial. Yep. But mm -hmm. here is one thing that many people do not understand, and that's outgoing calls, and that's why we explain it. I have a hardware phone, which is the SNOM phone, that one, and I have a soft phone, which is just this here. And if I use that, it is just a soft phone and does a call, mm -hmm. but I can also use the same for remote control. The same interface for Looks controlling this the phone. the same. Maybe yeah. it has other features because one phone has not this and that feature yeah. and the other one has. Yeah. But basically it is all the same. But the workflow is the same. Yes. That's the important thing. We cover this in the telephony yep. uh, part mm -hmm. tutorial, but just to not confuse you here, uh, if you just watch this beginner series. Yeah. Then uh, for sure you can choose a language mm -hmm. and dark theme, light theme. My favorite language is Bavarian. Yes. Mine is English. <laughs> really? Okay, no, fair enough. No, Good. No, now, um, notification settings, they're yes. important with pop-ups and all this kind of stuff, how you want to be notified for yes. uh, calls and uh, chats and so on. And the next thing... You can import uh, contacts mm -hmm. from Apple address book or Outlook if it's installed or Dativ or mm -hmm. whatever. Yep. So we have a lot of opportunities here. Here we have shortcuts. You should get familiar with them because they're very, very handy. Yep. Also, click the dial is very impressive. You just mark one number somewhere. Press the shortcut and, and it dies. dies. Yeah. And a lot of shortcuts which you mm -hmm. can change for sure. Actions is also another topic. You can have some actions. If you get an inbound call and you can click on an action and you can open soft, uh, yeah, software. Open CRM, ERP, whatever, and so on what? and so on. Yeah. So those are basically the features. Like I said, that's A to, A to Z, top to bottom, left to right, under the hood of the client. Um, there's a lot. Um, so just practice with it, um, send a few chats, and get used to the workflow. It's fairly intuitive, um, and the good thing about it is the experience is the same. No matter whether you're using Apple, Windows, uh, Android, or iOS, um, you've got everything there. So I'm going to wrap it up now and say thanks so much for watching. Uh, until next time when we're back with uh, some more on the desktop client. Thanks so much. Bye. See ya.